What's up, Stitches, and welcome to episode 15 of the Rainy Knits podcast. This is my podcast all about the things I am making with my hands and yarn. It is Thursday afternoon here in the upper left USA. My name is Justine, and I'm excited to talk about what I've been making with you. Not making with you, you know, like I'm talking about what I'm making, not that we've been making together, although maybe we have. I hope you've been making a lot this week. <laughs> this last two weeks. In my intro, I always say the things I've been making with my hands and yarn, and I say that because occasionally I do other crafts besides knitting. Very occasionally. Um, I don't think that I've done anything since starting the podcast in November, anything other than knitting. Um, so yeah, I mean, I probably could have just been saying knitting all the time, but I don't want to exclude the other crafts because they have their place and they're good too. So this week, for what I believe is the first time on this podcast, that may be wrong. I'm usually wrong. I contradict myself constantly. So if you're new, welcome to the contradiction zone. Um, yeah, and I apologize, but... Happy you're here! <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit of everything this week. We've got finished objects, we've got works in progress, we've got half finished objects, thank you very much. We've got crochet and a little bit of, I don't want to call it, it's, it's macrame, okay? It's, it's like macrame for dummies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, macrame, that's not nice. Macrame for um, those of us who are not challenged, which kind of sounds ridiculous considering I am, I've been knitting for as long as I've been knitting, about 10 years now. Crocheting about that long as well, even though my crochet skills do not reflect the amount of time that I've been crocheting. Um, I am a beginner beginner crocheter. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so I do all these, you know, fiber related crafts. I'm also a commercial fisherman um, in my real job, and um, and yet I am garbage at tying knots. So um, macrame has been something that I've wanted to try, but haven't really found the right pattern because everything looks really complicated. But this one, I'll show it to you later, but this one is, it's a good one. It's a good one for beginners who are not challenged. K-N-O-T challenged. Not, not challenged. Oh, geez. So the first thing I want to share with you is a finished object. I showed this to you on my episode 14.5 of the podcast last week. It was like six minutes. <laughs> I couldn't get it together to fill, uh, provide any more content than that. Um, but this is my sparkle cardigan. And it's done! This is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, and it features this beautiful lace, um, well, really, really simple lace. This is a very, very easy lace pattern. Um, so, ta-da! It's done, and I am pretty happy with this one. It's, uh, it was a fun knit. I knit it in just over two weeks, and it didn't it didn't ever feel like it was flying off the needles. I know a fingering white sweater in two weeks is pretty quick, um, but I kind of, the whole time I kind of felt like it was just more of like a slower, meditative, like, because with the, with the lace and then you work the whole body flat, um, and then the sleeves are worked in the round, but with the lace and with all that purling when you're working flat, it really slowed me down. Like, I can whip through stockinette stitch fairly quickly, um, but I'm a little bit slower with purling, and then when you have to do the yarn overs and the SSKs and the two, knit two togethers, um, it just slows you down just a little bit, and I did enjoy that. I, I really... I think it's good to have a knit that's just not a product knit, um, which I am for the most part a product knitter, but sometimes it's just nice to have those knits that make you slow down and enjoy the process. So thoroughly enjoyed the process knitting this. Um, 
I knit this with Knit Picks, Stroll Tonal in the pearlescent color. Stroll is a 75 superwash merino and 25% nylon and I have a lot of this in my stash. Um, just about every project, the last couple projects, um, have either been entirely out of stroll or featured stroll. Um, there's still a bit more in my stash. Um, this cardigan, I knit the size medium for the body and I knit the size large for the arms, which I will talk about in a little bit. Um, but it took just over two skeins. It was two and then um, the last ball that I used I had a little bit of leftover from another project and I think it was about a third of a skein. So two and a third skeins to knit this entire cardigan. It is, the sleeves are full length and the body is also I mean, it's not cropped. It's full length. So with this yarn, there was some pooling. I decided not to switch skeins, so or alternate skeins. Um, so I did get some pooling, which you can't really see on the front. It's a little bit more obvious on the back. I think if I had been knitting this in stockinette, or if the colors in the yarn were um, less subtle, like it's a really subtle uh, gray to kind of a cream progression, and I think that pooling would have bothered me if the gray was a little bit more saturated, but as it is, I mean it looks fine, and especially in the front, I mean when I was knitting, these parts were knit in pieces. And there's not a lot of pooling here, it's just down at the bottom and the back, so it's not going to bother me. I almost considered ripping it back when I saw it, but I decided to just let it go, just go with the flow. So I think I covered most of the details um, that I wanted to cover in the last episode, that short 14.5 episode. Um, so my only little issue while knitting this pattern, which was not the fault of the pattern, it was my own uh, mistake. Um, so when you're knitting the back, you start on the back, you knit the back flat up to a certain point, and then you come back up here, pick up for the left and right front separately, um, and knit these front panels um, with some shoulder shaping going on in there. When you knit the back, when you end, when you stop knitting the back for the moment, we're supposed to mark where you left off in the stitch pattern, which row, so that when you go and knit the front, you can end up on the same row. So when you join to work the front and the back, still working flat, but you join them so that you're working them all in one piece, you end up on the same row, which I thought I did, but apparently I did not mark down which row. I did not mark, I did not mark down the correct row <laughs> where I ended up. So, so when I finished the front right panel, I ended up on the wrong row, and so I had to add like three extra rows or something like that. So therefore, I had a couple. I had an extra bit of fabric. On in the underarms for my sleeves so in order to compensate for that I knit the sleeves in the large size so I followed those instructions which I kind of noticed on other people's uh, Ravelry project pages that they had a, some of them had a little bit of puckering um, when they went to pick up for the sleeves and the small and the large, or not the small, the medium and the large um, stitch count for the sleeves isn't that much. I think it was about six stitches or something. Those extra however many stitches I picked up by following the large size kind of um, made up for that. I can still see that I have a little bit of extra fabric down here um, because I did that, but I mean, it does make the sleeves a little bit baggier and, and 
I like that. Uh, it's easier to wear. Um, I'm not a fan of tight sleeves. The other thing about the sleeves, I ended up cutting out about an inch um, for before you knit the cuff and about half an inch less when I knit the cuff. So about an inch and a half, maybe two inches total less on the sleeves than what was recommended. This was kind of weird for me because usually I add two inches, but before blocking it was hitting about want to say about here and I thought I know I'm using a super wash yarn I know it's gonna stretch because I did swatch and I did do all the little things I do with the swatch to make sure that it's um, the swatch is going to mimic how the sweater fabric is going to act so I knew it was gonna stretch a little bit so I cut those two inches off and just, that worked out really well I'm really happy with that decision the sleeves hit exactly how I want a sleeve to hit. Hit? It sounds so aggressive. The sleeve length is exactly the where I want it to be. <laughs> we don't need to be that aggressive on here. Um, but yeah, sparkle cardigan. Let's see, I think I went over everything else in my last episode. This little guy is bugging me, not on that side, this side right here. I don't know if you can see it, but one of these. So, um, this uh, stitch pattern has a backwards loop, so it's kind of like a yarn over, but it's twisted. And um, apparently, I swear, there's one that didn't get twisted. I can't find any other ones that look like they aren't twisted. But the one, of course, the one that didn't get twisted is right there. So, yeah, you didn't notice it until I pointed it out, did you? I was going to point out all my imperfections for you. Don't worry. I've seen them all. Um, yeah, uh, sparkle cardigan. I finally sewed on the buttons. I wore this a couple times, two or three times. Uh, it cooled down here. Um, it's been like kind of bouncing between like we'll have an 80 degree day and then we'll have a 60 de degree day and I don't know. So I did get to wear this but I hadn't found buttons yet. I found these at Joann's. Um, they're just little pearl buttons pearly buttons. I thought that was appropriate since the colorway was pearlescent. Um, yeah. Um, this is the first time sewing on buttons on a cardigan for me, so I mean, I don't like sewing on buttons, um, but it's different. Something different. And can't think of anything else um, I want to talk about for the sparkle cardigan. <sighs> Was there anything else that I had? Not that I can think of. I think that's it. That's all she wrote. So, super fun pattern. Um, I would recommend it, uh, especially if you're looking for like just like a lightweight, easy spring transitional cardigan. This is gonna get a lot of wear. It's not like really really exciting but it's something that I like will wear. But not right now because it's still warm in here with the windows closed. The sun is coming out. It's been cloudy all morning but the sun is coming out which makes me happy but also I have to keep the windows closed while I'm recording and it's like Okay, um, the next thing I have to share with you is a hoe. I have a half finished object um, that I've been carrying around in my Little Fish Stitches project bag with the sheeps on it. <sighs> so cute. I think, I think this is the only project bag I've ever purchased. I don't tend to use project bags, um, 
it's mostly my knitting just lives around. I don't travel with my knitting a whole lot. I'm not a knit in public person, not because I'm worried about what people are going to think of me about me, but because I get so distracted by everything that's going on around me when I'm outside of my... I sound like such a homebody, but it's true. Like, I just... When I have... When I don't have my normal surroundings, if I have other things to look at, I get distracted and can't concentrate on what I'm doing. Anyways. So, yes, this is my um, project bag that I carry around with me. Um, I was at the park yesterday knitting outside and it was really lovely. It was it was a warmer day here um, yesterday and I didn't want to be inside so I went to the park and there was a breeze and it was just glorious. So extra long intro to my half finished object. These are my King's County socks and I am knitting these with a I'm knitting these with a wool silk blend and this wool silk blend is super crunchy. Um, I think last time I talked about these I was trying to find the word crunchy and I kept going with crusty and that's not at all what I mean. This is not crusty yarn. I don't know what crusty yarn is but I don't want to work with it. This is Otto Gania yarns. It is hand dyed yarn in Chile and these are my King's County socks. So, like this, and this is why I need sock blockers, the stitch pattern doesn't look super great when it's not being stretched out, but it's got this gorgeous cable pattern going through, and it is a very easy um, cable pattern. It it's, looks complicated, but it's really not that complicated. And especially since I started cabling without a cable needle, which I talked about a lot, um, I think on episode 14, um, it's going so much better. So it's got, there's no, um, pattern on the foot because that would be super uncomfortable, but there you can see how the yarn works up. Super cool. So I did cast on the second sock right away and I haven't made a whole lot of progress. Well, it is a bit of progress. This sock features a fold over cuff. So you do a provisional cast on and then you knit and then fold it over. So it's actually twice the length of what this is here. My provisional cast on was not super tidy. I don't remember if I talked about this because I cast these on so long ago, but I had the, in the pattern, there's directions for the provisional cast on right in there. There's a full photo tutorial and everything. Um, but, I don't know, whatever I was doing was really messy. But the nice part is, it folds over on the inside, which the first time I did it, I tried to fold it over on the outside. And I was like, this looks like a mess. This looks terrible. But fold it over on the inside and hide it away and don't worry about it because it's a pair of socks and it's not a big deal. So, so the cuff is super squishy and awesome. So then you get really cool um, cabling on your foot. So this um, crunchy not crusty yarn is uh, it's interesting to work with and I'm curious to see how it blocks out if it gets any softer or if it gets any bigger because right now I'm knitting the smaller size and they're tiny bit tight. I mean, there's, they fit fine once I get them on, but it's kind of one of those things that, like, you have to work a little bit extra to put your socks on. Um, so I don't know. I haven't blocked this one yet because I wanted to wait until they were both finished to block them. That is the only sock I've been working on since March. March, April, May. I kind of want to get it done before June, but I'm running out of time. It's the end of May now, um, so we'll see. So that was kind of ho slash works in progress. Let's move on to my work in progress. So besides the socks, I'm only 
knitting on one thing, and that is my Tanya sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And I finished the lace part. You know, it took me about four days to knit the lace part, and it didn't feel like I was like rushing through it at all. I had a couple other things going on, and um, yeah, I just picked this up when I felt like I had the brain energy to concentrate. But it wasn't too difficult. It was about 40, what is it, 47 rows of lace. Um, the thing I did not like about working this lace was there's a couple um, pattern repeats where you have to do a knit four together. Um, and I'm knitting this on size four needles. It is a fingering weight. Battery low? Stop it! I just changed you! I'm gonna do this till the battery dies. Um, so, what was I saying? The knit four together was killing me. Um, it's just so tight and I was just jamming my needle in. Plus it didn't help that I was knitting this um, in warmer weather so my hands are a little bit sweatier. Sorry if that's uh, TMI, but um, yeah, sweaty hands and yarn um, makes my gauge a little bit tight. Um, so all of those factors, the knit four together was not fun. Um, I saw yesterday, of course, after I finished knitting the lace, um, I believe it was Vanessa of Vanessa Knits on Instagram. She posted something about knit four, knit four together, something about, um, like a, I don't know if it's a hack or, uh, just a easier way to do it or something. I didn't actually look at it because, like I said, I was done with it, but I will try to find that, and if I do find it, it will be linked in my show notes, um, which, by the way, show notes can be found on my website, rainyknits.com. Um, the show notes will be linked below. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, if I find that, I will, I will, um, hook you up. What? Well, wish I had seen that before. And even as I was doing it, I was like, there's got to be an easier way. Somebody has figured out because I can't be the only one who is struggling with this. Um, but yeah, I am knitting this on a size four needle. Um, usually with Caitlin Hunter patterns in the past, I see usually how many patterns of hers have I knit now? It's just the one. I The only one. <laughs> So usually, you know, like I'm an expert at her patterns. I feel like I've knit another one, but I think it's just the Alyeska that I knit. Anyways, well usually with most patterns, I have to go up at least one needle size, if not two. With Alyeska, I went up from the recommended five to a US seven. Sorry, I'm just double checking, keep looking back to make sure that my uh, battery's not dead yet. Um, I guess my camera will turn off when my battery dies. Um, so yeah, um, my point is, I swatched with the size 4, and I did not get gauge with the size 4 needles that I am currently using. <laughs> the swatch that I made was slightly tighter, so I probably could have gone up to a 5 or even a 6 US size 6 needle, um, but my dilemma was, so looking at the schematics given in the pattern, I kind of figured I was between sizes, so the recommended amount of positive ease was between 5 and 10 inches, and the small was only going to give me about 4 inches of positive ease, whereas the medium gives me like the full, nearly the full 10 inches. Of positive ease. So what I decided to do once I swatch was knit the medium with the needles that are giving me a slightly tighter gauge. So hopefully I'll get somewhere in the right amount of positive ease because 10 inches of positive ease seems like a lot, but I don't want it to be too tight, even though four inches of positive ease wouldn't be that tight. My main concern was with the arms because like with my sparkle cardigan I don't want my arms to be too tight on my sweater so I went with the 
arm size rather than the bust size, and so that's <laughs> roundabout. <laughs> that's how I got to a medium um, with the size 4 needles. So yeah, now I am just on the stuck knit, and I'm thinking about cropping this one. So what I've realized, I, I've i learned a lot about um, my size um, since I've started knitting sweaters, and usually I just go with whatever the recommended uh, length is on my sweaters. So whatever the pattern recommends, that's how long I knit it. Um, but with this one, I kind of want it to be cropped, and it is meant to be slightly cropped, but the shortest length is 13 inches, and I measured one of my regular tops, and 13 inches is a lot longer on me. 13 inches is in no way a crop top on me. I mean, unless you're not counting the lace as part of the length, it's... I'm so distracted by this battery low. I'm just waiting for it to quit on me. <laughs> Anyways, so... Yeah, I thought 13 inches was not going to give me a crop top, so I'm thinking, originally I thought 12 inches, but I might even go to 11 inches of uh, length. We shall see. So the other thing was, I did swatch for this, and once I washed my swatch, it grew in length um, quite a bit, and this is... Um, I'm knitting this. I did not mention what I was knitting this with. I am knitting this with Sweet Georgia yarn. No, this is Sweet Georgia fiber in their Tough Love Sock base, which is a 80% superwash merino wool and 20% nylon. You can do math. Uh, and the color is silver. It is a really interesting blue gray. Uh, sometimes when I photograph it, it looks totally gray. Other times it looks really blue. This is pretty accurate, uh, the way it's showing up on screen. Um, but it is a superwash, and superwash does stretch when you block it. And I, that's what I, that's what I was going to say about the sparkle card sparkle cardigan. I knew there was something else. So um, after I knit the sparkle cardigan, I blocked it as you do. Just lukewarm water with a wool, wa wool wash. A wool wash. And uh, soaked it and then blocked it on blocking mats. When I took it out of the water, it had grown to about tunic length. It was ridiculously long. The sleeves were ridiculously long, which I don't know why it surprised me, because I should have known, um, but so I, I put it on blocking mats and I kind of like scrunched it up and uh, the next day it was about 90% dry and had uh, kind of gone back to shape a little bit, but it was still about, it was still a little too long. Um, I wanted it to be about the same length as when I was knitting it. So I did throw it in the dryer. It was just the tiniest bit damp. It was 90% dry. I put it in the dryer for about 10 minutes on um, low heat. The lowest the dryer would go. I don't know if I would recommend that. No, I know I would not recommend that. I, I hope nobody does that on my recommendation. I just knew that I wasn't going to be happy with the way it was, so I took a gamble. It paid off. It was superwash. I would never put non-superwash in the dryer, but it shrunk up. Um, it did uh, totally mess up my blocking, um, <laughs> so I had to re-block it. I steam blocked it when I re-blocked it, so I just took the steam iron and uh, gave it a little steam and kind of like stretched out the um, lace part. Well, the whole thing is lace. I stretched out the lace. I stretched out the whole thing a little bit, but steam blocking is not as, as aggressive as wet blocking, so it kind of just smoothed it out and uh, yeah, made it the shape that I wanted to. So 
I don't know what I'm going to do when I have to wash that thing. I guess wash it, dry it, I guess put it in the dryer, and then steam block it again. That sounds like a lot of work. I don't know. I'll, I'll, um, I'll deal with it when I get to that. That is a future Justine problem. Um, anyways, so this is also a superwash yarn, a different superwash yarn, so it might not behave in the same way, but I am aware that it is probably going to grow in length. I mean, I'm 90% sure that it is going to grow in length. Um, my swatch did grow. So, what I was thinking was I was going to knit this to... Um, I might even like knit this to 10 inches and then wet block it so while it's still on the needles. I don't know. Um, let me know if you've ever wet blocked something in progress because I was thinking about just sticking another set of uh, circular needles on this so that I have like plenty of length but I don't think, I don't think it would be a problem to get my needles wet. The other option would be, would be to put it all on a, um, like a scrap piece of yarn or something and wet block it that way, but I, you know, I hate taking things off the needles if I don't have to, so I think what I'll do is just keep it on, stick another needle in half of this, wet block it, and then just see how long um, that gives me when it's about 10 inches. Is that a bad idea? I honestly can't think of a reason why I shouldn't do that, but if you've tried it or if you can think of a reason why I shouldn't, um, please let me know. I am not at that point and I probably won't get to that point for a while now. Um, I think last time I measured this is about 6 inches, so I'm definitely going to go to 10, maybe 11, but um, yeah. I am um, alternating skeins. I alternated skeins throughout the lace because this is uh, kind of a tonal and uh, I've had some experience with pooling lately um, and didn't bother me on that one but it would bother me on this one. So I only have these two skeins so hopefully, well if I cut the length, if I don't knit it that long then it shouldn't be um, an issue uh, for yardage. I think I'm, I have plenty of yardage. Um, but I just decided to alternate skeins through the lace because I didn't want to line where my lace ended. And I'm happy I'm doing that because there is, there is some variation, um, between these two skeins. So I'm doing my best to avoid any major mishaps as far as, um, pooling and whatever else. I'm liking the way it's looking. Yeah, there's a little bit of variation here, um, but looks pretty good. It almost looks like denim to me. So yeah, this is where I am alternating skeins and there's a little bit of a line, but I think that's on the, I think this uh, beginning of round is going to go on the um, side. So hopefully it's not too big. That would be kind of a bummer, but I think it's going to be about the right size. Looks like a cute little skirt right now. That would make a cute skirt. Could be a whole dress. So I promised you other crafts besides knitting, and you may have noticed that I have a crochet project. This is the West Coast, West Coast. <laughs> I'm stuck on West Coast. This is the weight. My goodness, this is the waist coat basket, which I'm having trouble saying. Um, by all about Annie um, and her patterns. If you aren't familiar, which uh, I'm sure you are, uh, are super cute. Um, 
She does a lot of Ami Gurumi, um, hence the name All About Ami, but she also has some sweater patterns and some home decor patterns. I don't crochet very often, and I am a beginner, beginner crocheter. Crocheteist, um, as I mentioned before. Uh, so her patterns are super easy to follow. There are step-by-step -step instructions in addition to like normal written instructions. There are photos, there are video tutorials. They are the very beginner friendly. Um, yeah, so this is just a little basket. I'm knitting it with some Lion Brand. I think this is Lion Brand Woolies. Pretty sure. Um, I bought a an enormous quantity of this. At one point, I thought I was going to knit a blanket, but I didn't. I didn't knit the blanket. Um, and this is the same... Oh, I'm also using this uh, Karen Victorian Christmas. It's uh, tan with some glitter in it. It's just got like a thread of sparkly gold. Um, and this is the same combination that I'm... I'm using two skeins of the Lion brand held together in addition to the um, Karen Sparkle. Um, and this is the same combination that I knit my poof with, so it's going to match once it's done. I didn't have the recommended hook. I'm using a K hook, which is a 6.5, I think, maybe? I think you're supposed to knit it with the size up an eight or something. I don't know. I don't know anything about hooks. Um, I just have some and I use the ones that I have when I am in the mood for crochet. Um, so yeah, so like when I was knitting with this combination of yarn um, for my poof, it is not doing great things for my wrist. It's not super comfortable, um, but yeah, it's giving me a really, really dense fabric that is standing up on its own. The bottom is a little saggy <laughs> when I hold it up like that. Um, a little saggy bottom. That's okay. We are bottom positive here and uh, we're not gonna worry about it because it's just gonna sit on the shelf. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what motivated me to start this crochet project. I just kind of needed something different, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, it's got this, um, the stitch is the waist coast. I keep wanting to say waist coast. The waistcoat stitch. So um, if you're interested, go to her website because <laughs> you stick it, you you crochet into the bottom V rather than into the top loops. Yes. I'm sorry. If you crochet, you're probably laughing at me right now because my explanation is ridiculous. Um, but I can barely explain knitting stuff um, in words that come out of my mouth. That's that. Um, and if you want to learn crochet, definitely uh, head over to All About Emmy. Um, yeah. And make yourself some cute little baskets. I'm really glad that my camera seems to be working. Um, uh, last night, I had just fallen asleep. It was about two in the morning or something, but I have this bookshelf. Um, it's really small. It's like, you know, maybe like two and a half, three feet high. Um, but I have a bookshelf that sits next to my bed and it's just got like a bunch of random junk on it, but I had set my camera on top of it thinking that that was a safe place to put it on. Um, and I just fallen asleep and uh, the whole thing came crashing down and I was up like that. I am not a person who wakes up fast. It takes me at least half an hour to be like go from sleeping to fully awake. I was up. I was out of bed. I was convinced that we had just had an earthquake and um, we live in earthquake country. I've lived in earthquake country my entire life um, and like I'm prepared. I'm ready. Like. I was like, I jumped up, I was like ready to get away from the windows, I was gonna run downstairs, grab my earthquake kit, um, <laughs> full blown panic. Anyways, I woke up this morning because then I realized that it was just the shelf that f fell over and uh, 
decided to deal with it in the morning. Um, I woke up this morning and realized that my camera had fallen off onto the floor and, uh, yeah, so, um, seems to be doing okay. It seems to be working properly. Um, luckily, um, we have carpet and it fell onto the carpet, actually fell onto my knitting, um, which was thrown on the floor right next to my bed because I'm a garbage person and when I finish knitting I just kind of, uh, which, that's why you use project bags. Uh, whatever. I, I wash my knitting after I finish knitting it, so I don't really care where it is. It's always laying around. I guess it's not great because it gets tangled, but it would get tangled in a project bag too, so anyways. Camera's okay. Knitting's okay. Everything's okay. I may have lost some earrings, but I'll find them. I'll find them when I step on them later tonight. Um, my last project is... Well, it's finished. It is my macrame project that I've been working on. That I've been working on. That I spent, like, like maybe an hour total working on last night from start to finish. Um, this is a pattern by... Uh, it's... It's Deep Rosé. So, uh, originally, when I started following her, I thought it was Deb Rosé, like her name was Deb. But then I heard somebody else talk about her, and they were like, Deep Rosé, I don't know. Didn't look it up. Um, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Um, you may be familiar with her. She has, um, like a learn to knit hat pattern, um, and she also sells kits. Um, she's got a super fun Instagram. Everything she does is black and white and really fabulous and cool and, um, yeah. So, this is her, like, this is a, I mean, I guess you can call it macrame. I think technically it's macrame, um, but it is extremely easy and it was super quick to put together. I mean, basically, like, I don't know. I took a break um, while working on this to go get sushi, so I don't know exactly how long it took me, but it was it was less than an hour total. Super super easy, really great pattern. Um, if you yeah, if you are interested in that, um, her pattern has video tutorials, photo tutorials, everything you need to know. I mean, you don't you probably don't need a video tutorial to um, tie these knots. If I don't need a video tutorial, you probably don't, but, like, um, yeah, this would be a super fun project to work with kids. Um, it is great. And she is super, super sweet. Um, I mentioned her in one of my Instagram stories because I was waiting for these 8-inch, um, uh, hoops. I had the 10-inch, you have to have a, you need a 10-inch and an 8-inch hoop, um, to do this project. And I found the 10 inch at Joann's, but I could not find an 8 inch. They had them out of, they were out of stock. Um, so, but I was um, sort of complaining about that. I'm not really complaining, but just like, eh, waiting for my 8 inch hoop. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and I just, you know, tagged her in it because it was her pattern and she got back to me and she was super sweet and we had like a little conversation and it was really nice and like that goes a long way for me like she didn't, she didn't have to reply she probably gets like uh, messages all the time on Instagram but like she she replied and like was really genuine and sweet and um, I enjoyed our little chat so yeah and I really enjoyed working on this and I totally love the finished object. So I'm thinking about making another one of these. Well, I'm think I'm, I'm planning on making another one of these. Um, and I'm gonna hang them up somewhere. And, um, yeah. Super fun little macrame project. I recommend it. If you're looking for a quick and easy project, well, if, especially if you have the rings. But if you're looking for um, something easy and fun, I didn't 
find the yarn that was recommended. It seemed like from the photos her yarn was a little bit thicker and had a little bit less stretch. This has quite a bit of stretch. This is um, Red Heart Strata. This is Erin. I think Erin is the colorway maybe? It is 76% acrylic and 24% nylon. It's like a t-shirt yarn. Um, so it's got like it's looped like it's a chainette style yarn and it's got a whole lot of stretch yeah it, it's a t-shirt yarn um so it's a little bit more stretchy and I think it's a little bit less dense than the one she used but uh, I couldn't get my hands on the kind of yarn that was recommended so this is what I went with um go check that out if you're interested in some really easy to make wall decor. And that's everything I have for this episode. So thank you so much for tuning in. I always appreciate it. If you want to find me all over the interwebs, I can be found as Rainy Knits on Instagram, on Ravelry, um, or my website rainyknits.com where the show notes for this episode and all of my other episodes will be. I do have a Ravelry group for this podcast. It is the Rainy Knits podcast group over on Ravelry. Links to my Ravelry group, my Instagram, my Etsy, um, what else? I think that's it. And my website um, will all be below. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, as always, big love to all of you who uh, continue to support me and subscribe and comment and like. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching Stitches. I will see you next time. Next time will be my last episode before I leave for the summer. So uh, yeah, tune in for that. Subscribe so that you stay updated on my next episode. Alright, Stitches, be well and happy knitting. Bye!